Okay, well here we go again with another one of my painting videos. Um, during the winter, um, walking up onto Gallywood Common, there's parts of the lower parts of uh, uh, where, there's, where there's a dip in the land that in the winter tend to fill up. In the summer, they're not ponds anymore. Uh, but I took this lovely photograph of some of the trees that are actually standing in the water um, with a light, with a backlight. Um, and I just want to try and put this down in my own way onto watercolour paper. Um, a lot of people would, would see this scene but not feel <coughs> comfortable really um, of tackling the, the, the composition. So um, I'll put my drawing down. The basic composition is pretty good. It's, um, you know, it's a large tree to the right in the foreground, creating depth behind that before you come to the more middle distance trees that run across and reflect. Um, so um, what I've done, I've put a very rough drawing down, only about a couple of minutes drawing on that, uh, and that's really all I need. And now I'm going to take you through the painting process. Well I'm working on Canson 140 pound knot watercolour paper, and to start off uh, I'm going to damp the sky right the way across quite a normal process because I want a clean background um, it's quite warm in the studio today and um, just looking through some photographs and I saw this little gem of a photograph and I thought let's let's see what we can do to this and get get a watercolor out of it you know it doesn't have to be anything too elaborate just to have a bit of fun with the with the um, with the colors really um, and that's what I'm hoping to do some on the paper there not quite sure what that is but we'll live with that good okay so that's that um so I've, I've damped the top of the paper keeping the lower area um unpainted at this stage now i want to give the impression of sunlight there so i'm putting in uh, lemon cadmium lemon something like that then i'm going to throw in a little light red um normal sort of process fairly light bit more light red as we come across and down and introduce a bit of that into that area it will dry up considerably lighter than that so um, that's one thing that you always need to remember and then I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going to use actually I'm going to use Windsor Blue with Cerulean Blue for the blue of the sky and this is going to be quite weak and you just introduce that in to the area that you just painted and you just throw it across the paper really there we are and what I'm going to do while I have that lovely light effect now I'm going to paint the water now the water is going to be a different blue it's actually going to be ultramarine so I'm banging ultramarine in, into the sky, very dark or fairly dark in the foreground here. So nice strong ultramarine there. And this is onto dry paper so it holds. Because that's where the deeper part of the blue is. Just to emulate or, or reflect that. And as we go to the outside edge, we wet it down. We add a little bit of red with that, cadmium red. Um, just to show, oh and of course in the water there is a bit of yellow as well, uh, albeit a bit greeny yellow um, because that is water we're reflecting, it's not the sky and uh, of course as we go over this way it gets sort of rather muddy and sort of, there we are, and just, just allow that to flood down now, there we are, and that is all you need for the first start of uh, this type of painting. In actual fact, I'm going to go darker there. So I'm really going in with, with the blue. There we are, and I'll put a little bit of light red with, um, red with that, not the light red, the cadmium red. And just sweep that across to indicate. I mean, it is winter. And that is the first part of this lovely painting. Now I've given it a couple of, uh, a minute or so, just to soak in, um, but now I'm going to paint an impression of some distant trees, and these are going to be sort of bluey purpley. Um, it is winter, but 
so we don't want any greens as such and this will be the trees just behind this foreground there. I want that to, to be painted in while it's still damp and as it goes away it turns quite blue just to give a feeling of depth and that gradually soaks away there okay that's looking quite good good now I'm going to do the dark bank while it's still damp and hopefully we'll get some run down and there again I'm going to use this time I'm going to use Windsor Blue with a touch of the cadmium yellow and a little bit of Indian Red try and get that nice deep dark sort of blue green really for the bank so that's where that's going to go because you've got to remember the back backlight here so all we do won't worry about the tree at this stage um, and there is a little bit there as well there's also a bit of additional red into that where the lights hitting the top there we go as I say we're having a bit of fun with this now um, a bit more red well that wasn't much red let's try a bit more red there you go and it's all getting sort of misty and hazy which is exactly what I want in the background then I'm going over to something with a little bit of green in there uh, there is some little touches of green here and there within that that's looking good and um, uh, albeit this is all very dark because this is my darker area against the bank or along the bank edge there just begin to dry now so that's nice just took off about right I think and then clean the brush and we have some fresher greens then um, which not not summery greens but something a little fresher there we are Something with a little bit of freshness in it, and I'm rubbing the brush on the paper for that, so it's sort of semi soaking off some of the colour as well. A bit more there, and that is almost white, so we'll fiddle around with that until we get that right. Then, up in the top, we're going to have um, some impressions of sort of like red dull red colours sort of branches browns browns greens and this is for any sort of branches tree work in the background there not a little bit here and there that this is all the early stages so that when we actually come to paint on the top we've got the impression of branches see that's gone a bit dry there and that's all working quite well so we've got a bit of depth to the trees before we even start that's good and then we've got so like a, a very deep sort of green here bluey green very bluey green for sort of like some trees that's coming in very dark but there's plenty there's some light on there And then I'm just going to stroke across the paper with a damp brush. There we are. And that then gives us a bit of texture into this. Um, you know, a bit of light onto that edge as we come across. And then we're going to go very dark. Now, just before it dries, I'd like to catch this if I could just before it dries into an area there because that will bleed up you see as it dries and picking around the outside of that bush there there we are and then we just open it up and we have a bit more of that dark there and we have another little bit more there all along this bank not quite as dark there and then flip down my old way of transferring colour to paper in a random sort of form good so that's our background or oh, what, what about just pulling those two lumps down 
bl blind building those together as well there we go and just a couple of objects that are stands up there whatever they are brilliant and uh, that's that okay we'll allow that to dry um, I will just show you what I'm doing here I'm actually what I did I rubbed across and raked off some color and pulled it up those trees like that there we are see the way I'm raking off the color and then I pulled it down into the water's edge so that way it it gives us an idea where the trees will be so that's that right now we've raked off color what I'm going to do I'm going to put in the tree trunks themselves so I'm using a very large um, well, it's a number eight uh, rigger um, it's red sable rigger and for the trees um, I'm going to use all, all quite dark um, let's use the brush doesn't want to be too damp for this I'm going to use Windsor Blue and I'm going to use yeah let's use the red again the in the Indian the, the cadmium red with a touch of the lemon yellow again because these want to be yellowy brown and they need to be quite quite dark in fact very dark there we are a little bit of warmth but a bit of blue now we've got one standing let's do the foreground ones first now this is actually in the water so where that stands will be dead flat because it's obviously water it's dead flat and it heads off up like that and it goes away notice how the brush loses paint as it goes up and to me that's exactly what I want it to do although I've run over that but you'll see in the moment what I mean by that there's another one that sits there and that I do need to lose color there we are Deep dive into the color now we've got another one that sits about there not as wide and we pull that up lovely way of painting this lovely way of establishing trees Look at the way it breaks out open into that sky area adding a bit more red now because these are getting nearer I've got a large one somewhere around here one would presume that it's that one there so that still sits slightly in the water so there again that's got to be pretty much flat and there again as it sneaks up it loses a little bit of paint from the brush lovely textured feel so if it's breaking into the light there is another substantial one that sits right there somewhere reasonably substantial or substantial whichever now as I go over I'm going to introduce more red with a little less paint if I can yes there you go and this indicates that we're getting near the light source another one here and that will indicate we're getting near the light source and that one too you can see where I've I've just dropped that in and it's sliding away see how it's getting uh, more near the light source so I'm losing a little bit of the paint now I've got a branch that comes off there like that um, I've got another branch that comes off there like that um, and these are going to snake away now I'm adding a few a few branches here that um, some are wider than others some that one comes from there and then shoots off to there that one goes up to there this one slides off up there and up there there's one that comes out there I'm just adding branches where I feel you know I'm, I'm looking at the, the the tree itself but I'm also adding branches where I feel they really um, should be right yeah that one goes off up there there is another branch that snakes away up there that's it not too many branches in the lower area but a few 
and of course we've got some trees behind I'll put those in in a second let's just get these little devils in first there we go there we are. look at that there we are and immediately we've got the effect of light coming from behind those trees now I'm adding more blue now because I'm going to do some smaller ones in the background so a little bit more blue to these a little bit less sort of clearly defined sort of one there another few there don't want to overload the background and of course there are all sorts of lovely branches that come across into and out of these trees some are trees behind that stand in the background the density of it all you know that's what I'm trying to depict the density of all the trees that are there without losing the sense of light coming from behind those trees okay I think I've done enough to that we don't overdo that area right now I'm going to do this tree here now that, that those two trees there will need some colour so it's slightly different in as much as it's slightly green so it's sort of like a greeny trunk and I'm putting that on first in a wet form All right and the same for that one notice I'm putting not the shadow side the back up the back edge of them there we are now I'm going to go in with a bit more red and a bit more but a bit more red this time because these stand forward and there's two there there's that one there and see the way I've allowed that sunlight to show on the outside edge of that that trunk there we are not on this side keep that fairly clean if you can say that because that's there we are lovely and the same goes just a little speck more water in this one just before it dries and this is going to be quite dense really there is a little bit of light on that left hand side I don't want to show too much there so that's that and the way that that cut grows up there there you go look at that there we are and of course in the background you've got these smaller trees that run up in the background albeit plenty of light okay yep I'm pretty much happy with that it's just bring that out of picture not happy with it finishing before it goes out of picture yep gives a lovely fan of light um, now we're going in with a bit more red now and I'm just going to finish that edge let's just soften this red up there we go and I'm going to then finish that edge with a band of light edging that's picking up the the actual side of that tree and it just gives that little bit of sort of glinting of light that you can see on these outside edges if you look very very closely and all the time I'm trying to get that film of light coming through good and then with this very light color I'm dropping in on the back edge of this now it's a like a red really that will blend through into that green and create the illusion of a backlight there we go look at that and now we finish that back edge down there can you see the way that looks as if there's light a bit more red into this area just to clearly find that back edge there there we are see the way you, you know I'm sure you can see the way you, you feel that light coming through just bring that out of picture I don't want there again I don't want those to stand 
and this has got to be sort of washed away really because I don't want light we'll create another one there too much attraction down that bottom right hand corner good and that is how you do those trees just one other thing I'll put a branch in there now this has to be dark so I'm going in with the red again and Windsor blue so it's cadmium red Windsor blue plenty of red very damp not damp very dry sorry extremely dry and it's going to start there and it's going to go like that and it's going to head off out of picture like that yeah that i think you'll agree enhances that film of sunlight in the distance and then from that we'll then have a branch coming up there not too many branches and a branch coming up there and but I mean that's pretty much as I would have expected there we are yep that looks pretty good to me um we'll allow that to dry and finally what do we do with the reflection well I use a dull greeny grey so it's cadmium red cadmium yellow Windsor blue and the mix is decidedly um, it's, it mustn't be the same strength although it is on the photograph if you paint it like it it won't look right it mustn't be the same strength as the trees themselves so to start off I have and I'm going to show a bit of movement in this so we've got the bank there now this is the reflection of the back of the bank in the water not the trees this is just the reflection of the bank so that comes around to there that's all in water there trees are all in water there we are and of course this load the brush a little more and this is where the whole thing begins to come together there we go look at that and I'm going across the area where the trees will reflect because I'll paint those in shortly and of course that then spreads across like that nice and gently tease the paper bit more red perhaps as it comes forward make it a little darker there is a lot of reflection there as such but let's run that across there we are. and of course we do have quite a bit in this foreground from the overhanging branches really so we'll sweep that like that Good. I think that's probably it one or two just one or two light marks just running into there like that just to show movement and then finally red yellow same three blue to get the reflection that's not quite as dark in the water of the trees themselves now you don't just paint down or I don't I paint across and down like that got to be there. there's a bit of an angle to that so I've pulled that over this one has to be also angled like that this one has to be angled too but the angle it was already painted at already um, shown bit more open there perhaps good and this one then again will have a bit of jagged feel this one again I'm keeping the color the same could change color a little bit if you wished but um, and of course that tapers away like that because of movement in the water not a great deal of movement but and that like that and that like that 
one or two other little bits and bobs standing down into the you know from the bank there we go there we are good and that I think gives you a clear indication that we've got water just bring that bank edge up so we can't see any light along that bank edge I don't want any real light there such there you go okay let's allow that to dry well that's pretty much there now and uh, just the final touches and a signature really now I'm going to use a flat brush just slightly damped I just want to sharpen up so I'm going to use some very dark paint just the blue and the red Windsor blue and cadmium red not too much red and I'm just going to just show a bit of texture on this bank just to give that a little bit of just kill back some of that light effect there we are look at that it just helps to give that additional mistiness not too much don't want to cover too much of that brilliant okay so that is those final touches now all I'm going to do is sign it with some very dark paint on a small brush and I'm going to sign it in this bottom corner here so let's just make sure we've got enough paint on the brush there to sign it and we put our name there's no set way there's no set place to sign your work it really depends and how you sign it really you know I just go with whatever the brush does for Colin Steed and um, uh, just a couple of areas there I want to darken off and um, and let's hope that one day you know somebody sees that and says ah oh, that's a Colin Steed so that's how you paint this particular scene that you can see you know it did look very complicated but I hope I've shown you how to simplify it because it is it is a simple subject and treated in the right way can be extremely effective I hope you'd have a go at that sometime and um, if you've enjoyed that video um, stay tuned to my YouTube channel Please subscribe in the bottom right hand corner, the logo, click on the logo and um, happy painting and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you all for watching.